everyone, this is Denise at Something Beautiful Handcrafts, and I want to introduce you to Samantha's, not her newest outfit. This is like her older newest outfit. Okay, so I am a little obsessed with Samantha's lawn party dress and her tea gown. And of course, instead of just buying them like a normal person, I decided I was going to make something similar. While I was looking through patterns to make one or patterns that I could take apart to use as foundations for making one, I found this pattern. And of course, I could not pass it up. And it's the Anne pattern by Pemberley Threads. The Anne pattern is an Edwardian pattern with a uh, shirtwaist that has pigeon breast and a beautiful long skirt with what I would describe as a tail. I mean, it's basically the quintessential look when you think about Gibson girls. And so I just had to make this. Now, last year, roughly about this time, when I was going through the historical makes, I paused and I made this outfit. And that was it. So I've had this outfit in a bag for almost a year now. And I just completed all of Sam's historical PC patterns a couple months ago. And so I had moved past Sam all the way up to Molly and still hadn't shown this outfit. And now it's like August. So Sam really should have been wearing this outfit pretty much all spring and summer. But I ran into the bustle pattern. And so, kind of put this on the back burner. So, here we are in August. And she's just now wearing it. And when I made it, I didn't take any pictures or make any videos on the construction of this outfit. Uh, I guess I'm going to have to go back. When I make one for Nelly, and, and there's more than one version given for the patterns. So, maybe I'll make Nelly the second version and I'll actually talk through it because... If you sew, this really is a pattern that I really think you need to try. Now, looking at the pattern, uh, Pimberly Threads gives a little chart, tells you what the sewing level should be. So this is classified as an intermediate sewing level. There are quite a bit of moving pieces to this one, and mostly... It has to do with the blouse and it does kind of depend on how you do the blouse there's a simple version of the blouse and then there's a panel that's a bit more complicated so you can kind of decide but there are a lot, a lot of moving pieces with it the skirt does have several pieces but definitely it's the blouse that is the the more complicated part there are some pictures in the pattern you really need to see. There are some places where a lot of lace could be uh, added. And I think I'm just going to make, I'm just going to keep making versions of this uh, particular blouse in all kinds of ways. Uh, it's really versatile for the period. All right, so let me go ahead and tell you what's happening here. Here's Sam. And I did move her wig because I had put it too far back. And now it's back into the right spot. Yes, she still has the short hair. If you didn't know, I sold the other Sam with the longer hair because this Sam has a ribbon wig. And I just couldn't bear it apart with the ribbon wig. Though I think at some point in time, I will get her. Um, if I can't find another Samantha wig, well, first I'm going to look for a ribbon wig. Then I'm going to look for a C, Samantha American Girl doll wig. And if I can't find either one of those, then I will get the Bee Beauty wig, which looks a lot like the um, White Body Samantha wigs. Okay, sorry. Let's start with the skirt. I'm going to start with the skirt because for the pigeon breasted blouses, there were actually some options. Most of the time, you would put the blouse on, tuck the blouse in, and then pull it out where it has that fullness at for the prison breast. But that's not the only way to wear them. I've also seen them where they were belted 
and the bottom of the blouse kind of ruffled out. So you got the prism, the pigeon breast effect. And you also got the ruffles and the belt. So yes, I've seen them look like that before. In this case, I did ruffle it at the bottom. But it still can be tucked in. So I'm going to put the skirt on first. And then I'm going to ruffle the bottom. And maybe I'll tuck it in for you. All right, so she is wearing, here's what she's wearing. She has on a chemise or a slip. Then she has on her lacy whites. And then she has on this petticoat. So we're not in the bustle era, but the Edward and ladies did wear bum pads. And they did have on fuller kind of petticoats. So in order to get the, the skirt its fullness, for Samantha, she's going to have on this extra petticoat. Uh, at some point, I did have her in the bump pad. But I'm not going to put it on for this video. And the bump pad that she wore in, in the bustle video is actually the same bump pad that I made for this outfit. So in one of the historical groups was asked, how do I, uh, you know, you probably put the clothing on these stalls when you have uh, the bustles and things like that. And I responded, I put them on the same way, you know, you would if you were watching those dressing in the whatever century uh, videos. Because once you put all of this petticoats and stuff on, it's kind of complicated to pull the skirt up from the bottom and then tuck all that stuff back down. It's much easier to pull the skirt over your head. So for the most part, all my dolls are dressed by pulling the skirts over top of the head and also when i made the waist i made the allowance on the waist for the fact that this doll is going to be wearing a big volume of clothing so this is a lot looser okay so you can see how this kind of bumps out in the back and so ideally she should be wearing her bum pad to kind of poof that out in the back so I'll probably go back and get it I really she should have the corset on but when I went to change her for the bustles and I was comparing her corset she's wearing to the one I was making for Mary Grace uh, it seems like the corset just kind of disappeared how does a purple 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 ish corset disappear not really sure because there's nothing else in this room that color but it'll pop up probably after I'm packing everybody's stuff. So at any rate, just pretend I put that under there, which I'm going to do. Next, we're going to go ahead and put on the blouse. Yeah, that was cool. I need to get one of those moving um, turntables. How cool would that be? That thumb always gets me. Okay, so as you can see, like I said, the skirt itself, um, the skirt itself is just kind of uh, a basic jigsaw puzzle. There aren't a lot of small pieces in the skirt. There's pieces, but there's not a lot of small pieces. So you're pretty good with that. When you look at the blouse, though, you can begin to see how this could get really intricate. We turn it around. And you know what? I guess this is a good way to look at it from the back. I should have put her hair up so you can see. Okay, so I've got the snaps in the back. As you know, I don't always finish every detail of the outfit. Sometimes I leave them without their snaps. It happens. But in this case, they need it to be done. Okay, so there are gathers in this back right here to either side of her okay and this would normally be tucked in but i liked it out so i finished all the edges so it would be out and here is the gathers in the front and i left it a little less gathered than normal because this particular pattern all these patterns are really wit written for the modern American Girl dolls and not for the Pleasant Company. So I had to make some allowances somewhere 
to get that extra quarter inch to half inch where it's needed. Okay, so this is it out. This panel is front and center. And really, what's really cool up here is the yoke. We tuck that in. This is a high neck. There you go, that's better. Okay, so let me see if I can get you a good angle of the yoke. The yoke is the coolest part. This is a lace insert, basically. And uh, this is a standard white muslin, both the skirt and the uh, shirt waist here. And you can see underneath the gathering at the top, and then this yoke that goes all the way around. It's like a Bertha collar. And where I cut out the lines here to stitch in the lace insertion, which was very cool. And if you've never done lace insertion, it's like the best part. You have this normal yoke right here. Then you lay your lace down where you want it. Then you stitch across the lace. Then you take your scissors and you cut down the center of that. That exposes the lace panels. You fold back the ends and you top stitch them down. So now you have this lace insertion. Got four pieces. Uh, I think my next pass, I want this entire panel to be lace. Or for the next pass, I want to have several rows of lace as the ruffles and lace around the arms here. That would be really cool. Uh, a couple of years ago, I made myself my own lace insertion collar like this, pasting together several pieces of lace, which is just the coolest part. And so, let me put it back there. And that is the look that Samantha has. I said she really needs to have had her corset on. That would have given her a better shape. Uh, I love this outfit right here. Uh, I'm... You're probably going to see a lot of this outfit. I'm going to make it up in different colors, different patterns, adding different embellishments to it because it's just basically it is what you think of when you think of Edwardian um, Gibson girls. The, the tail on that. Let me turn that just a little so you can see the tail on that dress. Beautiful swooping dress. Yep, this guy's been in hiding for a whole year. Alrighty. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.